So you want to work as a software engineer at Meta, but what's the process like? What should you expect? And what do you need to prepare? We'll answer all these questions and more as clearly and concisely as possible in less than 10 minutes. But before we do that, please leave a like on the video and subscribe to the channel. All right, let's go through the steps for getting a role. The first one is really basic. You need to apply. And there's many ways to do this. You can apply directly on metacareers.com. You can message a recruiter on LinkedIn. You could get a referral from a current employee, or you can attend a university day. It doesn't really matter how you do it, but you need to get your resume in the system and into the hands of a sourcer or a recruiter before you can move forward. After you've submitted your resume, you may get an email from a recruiter or a sourcer asking to set up a call to go over your experience. Here, you'll answer some basic questions about your experience, your current role, and what sorts of responsibilities you currently have. Nothing to really prepare for here, just answer the questions and don't come off as weird or incompetent at this stage and you'll be fine. The next stage of the pipeline is to schedule your phone screen. Now, here's what you can expect. Usually, you'll have about two lead code style coding questions. These will be of easy or medium difficulty. The expectations here are much lower than the on-site. As a general rule of thumb, you're said to have passed the phone screen if afterwards the interviewer thinks that you have at least a 25% chance of passing the on-site. Some E6 Plus candidates may also have behavioral questions included in their interview. Okay, so you made it to the on-site, what should you expect now? You're gonna have most of the times two coding rounds. It's usually two, but candidates E6 Plus may have more. You'll then have a design round with E6 Plus candidates again having potentially more. You're either going to do product architecture or system design. The choice is yours and more will be talked about this later. You're also gonna have one to two behavioral rounds. Again, senior engineers will have on the higher end. Depending on the role, you may also have a specialized technical round, for example, an iOS round, Android round, hardware round, depending on the role you're actually applying for. In some locations, you can actually choose to have your interview in person in the office again, if you'd like. Otherwise, it will all be done over VC, and candidates have the option to split the interview over multiple days, should they choose. Be warned that many people are frequently expressing frustration at the lack of interviewers available, and this means that there are constant reschedules. Depending on your performance, you may be asked to do a follow-up round or rounds if the interviewers need additional signal to make a decision. If you pass your on-site, the recruiter will call you to give you the good news and send over an offer via email with the details of your offer. This offer will consist of four parts base salary, your standard bonus rate, your RSU grant, and your sign-on bonus. Not all candidates will receive a sign-on bonus. The standard bonus is also fixed for your level and is non-negotiable. The base salary is negotiable, but do know that there is a fixed band for each level and the recruiter cannot exceed this band. RSU is typically the most negotiable and so is the sign-on bonus. Typically, you will only be able to negotiate if you have a competing offer from another company, otherwise the recruiters typically don't budge. Okay, now that we discussed the process from start to finish, let's discuss how we can prepare for the interview. For the coding portion, the best resource here is LeetCode. Purchasing LeetCode Premium is an absolute must. Not only does it give you access to the list of the frequently asked questions, but many of these questions are premium locked, so you cannot practice them without subscribing. It's $159, just do it. When it comes to preparing, Meta's interview follows a very predictable pattern. Their questions are not that difficult, and this is evidenced by the large number of easy and medium questions in their top list, and they have a hard rule against asking dynamic programming. While this does make it easier to prepare for their interview, the trade-off here is as follows. You are expected to solve the questions in the 40 to 45 minutes allotted. This means that speed is the name of the game. Your code needs to be basically perfect, meaning minimal, if any, bugs and optimal in time and space complexity. When preparing for the meta lead code questions, one needs to have practiced the top 70 to 100 questions many, many times and have the solutions essentially memorized. On interview day, you do not have the time to figure things out from zero. You need to see the question and immediately know how to solve it. There is a lot you must also do when solving a question. You need to read the question, propose possible solutions, evaluate solution trade-offs, agree a solution with the interviewer, code that solution, talk as you code to explain your thought process, validate your solution with the dry run, and finally provide the time and space complexity. You should also be aware that often the interviewers can add a slight tweak to the question to make sure that you aren't just memorizing the solution without understanding it. Preparing for meta interviews requires you to first understand the algorithm, then practice it over and over again to ensure that you're able to complete the task in the time allotted. 
When it comes to design, you have the choice between system design and product architecture. The difference can be summed up as follows. System design is focused on designing scalable and fault tolerant systems. Product architecture is focused more on API design and technical decisions which will provide a good user experience for someone using the product. But how do you know which one to pick? As a general rule of thumb, if most of your experience is in back-end development, then typically system design is the way to go. Otherwise, if you're a front-end engineer or a full-stack engineer, then product architecture will be closer aligned to your day-to-day -day work. That being said, it's important to note that there are far fewer resources out there for product architecture than there are for system design, making preparing for the former much harder. System design interviews have been around for a long time, and there's a lot of really great resources out there to help you prepare. Some that come off the top of my head, Grokking the System Design Interview Course, Alex Yu's System Design Primer, Designing Data Intensive Applications by Martin Kletman, and YouTube creators such as Tashar Roy, System Design Interview, and others. For product architecture, as mentioned earlier, there are far fewer resources and thus preparing is much more difficult. I've made a few videos on this channel for product architecture, and I'd also recommend checking out the videos made by Hello Interview as well. Otherwise, brushing up on basic API design principles and best practices is always a good idea. But as far as I'm concerned, product architecture is best suited for people with full stack development experience where you already do this sort of work. While it's quite simple to learn the basics of system design, with product architecture, a lot of it comes from hands-on experience, and it's not something that's usually easy to just read up on and have any sort of viable grasp on. I won't spend too much time discussing the behavioral section because it's pretty standard and nothing here is too meta-specific. You'll be asked a series of questions which are meant to evaluate whether your way of working and behavior is a fit for meta. Typically, you want to approach these questions using the well-known STAR method. I have a more in-depth video on this topic already, but to summarize, you'll be asked questions like, how do you deal with conflicts? How do you handle ambiguity in your projects? How do you handle managing priorities and deadlines? How do you handle receiving feedback and constructive criticism? How do you convince others to your point of view when in disagreement? And many more. You'll typically want to have one to two anecdotes from your career prepared for each of these major topics, which you can then draw upon and discuss with your interviewer. They'll poke and prod you, asking questions and follow-ups to gather the relevant signal that they're looking for. And that's your high-level overview of the interview process here at Meta and what you should be focusing on in terms of preparation. If you have any further questions, you can always leave them in the comments section down below, or you can join our Discord community to discuss. Or if you want more personal one-to-one -one coaching, you can also opt to pay for a mock interview session with me directly. I hope you found this video useful and informative. If you did, please don't forget to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. And as always, I will see you in the next video.